Have you ever wondered what the VAT basics are? Follow my video and I'll explain all. If you haven't yet, click the bell and subscribe to be notified every time we produce our best pieces of content. There's a lot to understand when you're running your own small business. You need to take in a lot as well as dealing with your customers. But VAT can be something that's easily made mistakes on. So follow my video and I'll explain all of the VAT basics in layman's terms. What is VAT? VAT is a sales tax. This means that whenever you sell something, it gets added to your product. So the people that pay VAT at the end are the final customer. But businesses in between this will charge VAT on their sales and reclaim VAT from their costs. But just remember, VAT is a sales tax. It could be a big washing machine of money coming in and going out of businesses, but it's the final user that will pay the VAT. VAT registration and threshold. If you want more detail on when to register for VAT and the threshold, follow our video. I did a video specifically for on VAT registration. But to recap again, the current VAT registration limit is 85,000. Now, just be mindful that by the time that you've watched this video, the VAT rate could have changed. So make sure you check the current rate of, of VAT thresholds. But it's, currently it's 85,000 and that is based on a rolling 12 months. When you register for VAT, you'll get a thing called a VAT certificate. In layman's terms, this means this is like a birth certificate for your company or business for VAT. It will have registered the date that you've registered, when your VAT quarters are, your address, and also your company. It's really important that you keep this because this certificate is the same as a birth certificate for a young baby for your business. So make sure you keep yours safe at all times. VAT returns. VAT returns are normally completed uh, by a business on a quarterly basis. The majority of the businesses in the UK do this but there are some circumstances where a, a business may choose to run a VAT return monthly. Uh, a good ex example of this is a construction company that may incur input VAT, which is VAT that you can claim off your costs up front, and they will allow them to get the money earlier in their account. VAT terms, output tax. This in layman's terms is VAT on your sales. So if you sell products or service for a thousand pound, you're gonna add 200 pound VAT to this. This 200 pound is known as output tax. So if you ever come across this again and you're not quite sure, just remember outputs is what you charge on your sales. Another term to bear in mind that's used a lot is input VAT. And like the opposite, input VAT is what you claim off your expenses. So if you're buying something for 120 pounds, you will have 20 pounds VAT and 100 pound cost, which will allow you to then claim that cost back on your VAT return. So just remember, input tax means money that you are reclaiming from the cost of your business. Is there any benefits? Well, yes, there are, but ultimately, if you qualify that you have to be VAT registered, you are a glorified tax collector. Get over of it, you're doing it for free, but it is the law, so make sure you stay compliant. What are the benefits? The benefits of being VAT registered are you can reclaim back VAT on your costs. This, this gets you more money because if you wasn't VAT registered, you wouldn't be able to claim these at all. Now, on the flip side of that, if your customers are business to business, they're not gonna care whether you're VAT registered or not because they can reclaim this back on their own VAT returns. It's not gonna be a cost in their profit and loss account reducing their profits. Now, if your customers are business to consumer, they are gonna feel the pinch on this. They don't have the benefit of being able to reclaim VAT. Whatever your total cost is will be the cost to them. So bear in mind, bear in mind for this. You don't need to VAT register if your turnover is less than 85,000. This can take away a lot of the admin and bureaucracy away, which will allow you to concentrate building your income up and getting great customers. But also another thing to bear in mind is how is your income classified? The main two are you can either be standard rated for VAT or exempt. Now, you won't learn these off the pat, not even I do. So when I take over a business uh, as an accountant or a business coach that I've never done before, I go and physically research their income streams if I've not come across them before. So there was a client recently that we signed up that is selling salt. Now salt, if it's culinary, is zero rated for VAT. Happy days, you don't charge any VAT on your income, but you claim back all the costs. 
but certain different types of salt, especially for bath salts, are classified in a different way. So don't learn what all of the VAP exemptions are and, and what your classifications are for income. Go and research, and if you can't do this yourself, sit down with your accountant or your business advisor. Trust me, I do this with every new client if I haven't worked in that industry for a while or ever at all. Pricing within your business. As I mentioned earlier, I think it's key to understand who your customers are, but also whether they can reclaim back the VAT or not. I'll give you an example. If, if you're getting some construction work done in your house and a builder's given you a quote, a lot of builders will quote 10 grand plus VAT. Well, to the consumer, that means 12. So initially they thought they were paying 10 and then they sit there and work out and go, oh yeah, well, that's another 20%. So that's 12. So I would say quote 12 in the first place and say this includes VAT because you're giving someone an unrealistic bar to then make it go higher. Now for us, I always quote excluding VAT. The majority of our businesses are businesses that who are VAT registered. They are not gonna care whether I'm VAT registered or not. So when you are pricing for your work or services, or product, make sure that you are quoting in mind with how the customer feels. Are you quoting in their total price or are you making it a bit less to give them a nasty surprise with the VAT? Because it, when anyone recalculates the VAT, they always go, do I really have to pay that? So don't make them feel in that way. So let's work this out as an example. I've talked throughout this video, we've got a thousand pound service or product plus VAT. So the sale is a thousand. That thousand pound will go into your profit loss account as sales or turnover. You'll then add 20% VAT. This goes into your VAT control account, which is basically an account that is just for your VAT. And then the total price will be 1200 pounds. So ultimately this amount will go into your bank account. So when you're looking at a product or service, you will have a net amount, you will have a VAT amount, and you will have the gross total. Now, if you're doing this round the other way and your total invoice to your customer is 1,200 pounds and that doesn't include VAT, to work this back outwards, to work out the VAT on this, you would need to times that figure by 20 and divide it by 120. This will work out your VAT amount. And in this case is 200 pounds because we've seen it come the other way. Your net amount will be 1,000. Um, so what you'll be losing on that sale is 200 pounds if you didn't put your prices up from your VAT. So again, it comes back down to knowing your customer, what type, of, what type of industry are they in? Are they business to business or business to consumer? Are they VAT registered and can they claim back the VAT? Be mindful that this is so, so important, which is why I've repeated it over and over on this video. Last thing to bear in mind is making tax digital. It's been around for quite a while. A lot of businesses have been doing it for a long time and there's a lot of businesses that are still not doing this properly. Making tax digital in layman's terms means you have to file your VAT return with HMRC electronically. And this is with an approved software. The approved softwares in the market at the minute are great because instead of keeping endless files of invoices and receipts, you can actually save picture copies of these directly on your software. No more files, no more rubbish, no more keeping it. It will stay on your system for good. How good is that? Because it saves a load of paperwork. And with invoices that are submitted now, which normally most people get their invoices by email, you don't have to print them off at all. Now, how much better is that for the environment and printing costs? So when you are filing your VAT returns, you need to make sure that you've got a gateway, which in layman's terms means a portal that gives you access for your VAT account so you can submit your VAT return and software that allows you to file it electronically. This is mandatory now, so make sure that you have the appropriate system in place so you are doing things without getting any problems. Now, I hope this video has really helped you. And if it hasn't, feel free to, I'll, I'll drop my Calendly link below. Uh, I'll offer a 30 minute chat. I'll take on board any questions that you've got and I promise there'll be no pushy sales pitch. Thank <laughs> you.